Hello and good evening. I welcome you to the special webinar exclusively for JFD Brokers today on uh, Thursday, the 13th of April 2017. This is Jens speaking and exclusively presenting this uh, format to you um, for JFD Brokers. Um, the title of this event is uh, the three columns of profitable trading. Um, probably you might have heard uh, some presentations similar to that. Um, but usually I have to say, and uh, that's based on my personal experience, uh, that people do not really uh, connect those three columns with each other. But usually you have um, events covering uh, risk and money management, just only only risk and money management, only trading psychology, or only strategies which, uh, which you could trade, but do not focus on um, the interaction of uh, certain uh, columns here which play a crucial role in, um, in trading in general. And uh, I think it's, um, it's, it's kind of belief, I would say, uh, which you have to establish that those three columns uh, interact with each other and uh, that it's really important to be an expert on all those three um, uh, columns here uh, to, yeah, to be capable of making money and trading uh, then, which is, um, which is our target at the end. And um, so let's first of all switch through the uh, risk disclaimer and then let's click here to the first slide um, it has the headline the toughest game in the world so what what I want to to present to you is or what I want to show you is um, you may you may already know this but um, trading is no um, yeah it's, it's no k kindergarten game or something like this but uh, trading is by far the toughest game in the world so I have plenty of experience also as a trading coach and um, there were several really really successful uh, businessmen I, uh, I, I uh, worked with um, and um, entrepreneurs who really made tons of money were, were hugely successful and um, I could definitely learn um, from them how to build a good business but the funny thing is um, that they didn't build this bridge or initially they, they weren't capable of building this bridge here and uh, seeing the connection between um, building up a business a usual business a I don't know selling whatever candles or something and um, on the other hand seeing the parallels here to trading and um, this is this is very very difficult since uh, sometimes they just say well I know all this but please let's come to let's say build a strategy that's m most of the time this is exactly what everyone wants to 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 get so usually you have a trading coaching and people do not really want to be coached and people do not really want to study the details and the, the the depthness of let's say the risk and money management aspects and why for example the risk of rein plays a very crucial role and how it is connected to building an advantage trading strategy but um, what they want is a strategy they can trade with and if they know that the trade that the strategy is, is profitable well they just go with it and they say well I do not have a problem to trade such a strategy now the thing is and this is a, a short anecdote you might have heard it already but um, I think it perfectly shows um, uh, what's what's the problem here with just going for a strategy where someone says well it's profitable or where numbers show it's profitable and um, the thing is um, well in the end you probably have a strategy which is profitable but you won't make money with it so and therefore this little anecdote this little story here of the turtle traders you as already said, I, you might have heard it, but um, it was a bet between uh, Richard Dennis and William Eckert. Some, I think, it was in the 60s, 70s, or probably at the eight. I think at the end of the 70s. I think uh, it was around the 80s, some somewhere there. And um, they said, "Well, let's bet um, that we can create uh, successful traders." They um, they 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 taught a very simple strategy. I could easily show it to you right now. I don't. I, I won't do it since it doesn't make sense. But um, you might have heard of the Donkian channel. Um, you can overlay your chart with this Donkian channel. You have two lines, 
and uh, it depends on which uh, which 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 uh, length you you type in here in the variables in the parameters uh, when when setting up this this uh, Duncan channel new chart. But let's say it's it's uh, the, the the parameter here is twenty. This is the length. Um, it then shows two lines, and it shows the high and the low of the last twenty trading days. And the system was really easy. It just said, well, go long if we break above the twenty day. Um, uh, high, respectively, if we break below the 20-day low, that was it. And then you had a, um, um, a certain a certain amount you were willing to risk on every trade. Um, you had a clear defined stop level. Sometimes it was above or below the 20 high low or or um, um, uh, the, the, 20 day high or the 20 day low I'm sorry and um, that's it I mean that's a very simple strategy you could easily if, if you write it down now you could easily duplicate it you could program it but the thing is that only several um, students were capable of making money they made tremendous amounts of money they made millions since the markets really fit this strategy um, um, during this time they were very um, uh, um, strong trends developing and this is a trend following system they made tons of money with this approach. But the thing is, not everyone made money with this approach. In fact, it was the minority making money with this approach. Even though they had the strategy, they just didn't know how to, to deal with it. Those who didn't want to learn um, and what's behind uh, yeah, profitable trading. And so uh, it perfectly shows also that, that this is definitely the toughest game in the world. So what I've prepared here is um, 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 a short slide showing you one information, especially those getting started with trading now and listening here uh, at this very moment. Trading is the toughest game in the world. And um, so the opponents in this game are some of the sharpest, smartest, most intelligent, well-informed, most irrational, and also quite often most unethical minds in the world. So you're not playing with, uh, with, with, with little children here or something. So you're, you're trading against professionals and they are prepared and they are willing to take your money no matter what. You might say, well, I'm a retail trader. Why should they uh, care about my, let's say, 10,000 euros if they make millions a year? Well, it sums up, right? It's a zero-sum game. Somebody, win somebody wins, somebody loses. That's it. And at the end of the day, if you're, uh, having, if you're facing as a professional 100 retail traders who do not know what they do, when they're trading and all of them have 100, uh, 100, um, 10,000 euros, well, you make a million. If you take every 10,000 from everyone, it's, it's one million and uh, it sums up in the end. And uh, this is exactly the state where you want to be. You want to be um, on, the, on, the, on the same page as the winners are, as the professionals are who really know what they're doing, not at the, um, on the other side. Uh, on, of the trade where you go into a trade and then at the end say okay now what's the next step hmm, where do I place my stop that's usually uh, not not a very good start but if you have clear rules you follow um, well you, you have a chance but this is something you have to define and this is something you have to 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 work through um, in trading you're playing also against computers which are way faster than you blink with an eye you've may have heard of, of flash trading um, so you're, you're trading with, against computers. You might have seen, uh, um, or probably might have said, well, um, I do not get enough signals in, uh, on a one-hour chart, let's say. So, well, let's go down to the five minutes. Let's go down to the one-minute time frame. Uh, let's go to the tick chart. You might love, you, you, probably you're laughing right now, but um, in my trading coachings, I faced exactly that. You, you can't imagine that. So um, the, 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 um, uh, the uh, the student wanted me to program him um, uh, hot keys. You you might have heard this <laughs> hot keys saying, okay, if I click let's say B um, on my on my keyboard, I'm buying a certain amount, and if I click S for for sell, well, I want to to sell a certain amount. And they want to have those, or he, this guy wanted to have those hot keys to be capable of scalping. Um, a 10 second chart because he was willing to get as many signals as possible so um, I'm at the end you're you're nearly trading the the order book here and um, as the, the the lower you go in the time frame um, the, the higher the chances that you're facing a computer on the other side of your trade and I can tell you if those computers are faster than you blink with an eye you have no chance 
by trading against those opponents. You definitely have no edge. You have a negative expected value. So this is something which you have to, to, to take into account here um, when, when trading and especially when trading those small time frames here. You're trading against guys who have way more experience than you have. Usually I'm, I'm, I'm a very nice guy, I'm a very kind guy, but when it comes to trading and someone um, asks me, okay, well, give me, give me an example of a trader who has more experience than I have, um, I say, well, it's me. And as you, you, you can't, I, I take all the money you have and more than that, um, and, and you, you won't even recognize it. And why can't I do this? Since I have experience, I know what I'm doing instead of guys who are standing in front of me and have no clue what they're doing. And this is exactly what you, what you, what you have to, to, um, to get. Um, this is a concept you have to definitely grasp and understand and, and, and make sure that, you, that, you, that you, want the, you want to be the one with the experience, you want to be the one with the knowledge who is taking other, the other guy's money. So you might consider this unethical, but guys who do not want to take the other guy's money, this is a game um, which is uh, which is where 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 money is 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 in the middle. It's on the table. It's a game about money, and then so if you consider it to be unethical to take um, someone else's money, well, trading is probably not the game you want to play. Um, sounds hard, but this is exactly how it is. Um, you're playing against funds who have more money than you have. Okay, so these guys uh, they 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 can easily push the market in one or the other directions. If you see trends developing, it's usually because funds have to buy a certain amount and um, they usually yeah, do this by buying several tranches in the market or selling it. And uh, that way, trends develop, for example. Um, you're trading against insiders who have more information than you. Um, something you definitely have to consider. Sometimes today it's, it's uh, connected with computers, flash trading, for example. Um, where where uh, it's sad that computers usually front run your orders, but um, it's also insider trading, like like you've seen it probably in in Wall Street with Gordon Gecko in the 80s. Um, so it's a similar same same thing. Another thing, very important, probably you're playing against your broker. It's not that every broker is as cool, fair, and transparent as JFD is, by the way. So um, I'm I'm working exclusively with with JFD. I'm also managing clients' money here, um, uh, and and I use JFD as my personal broker because I can, I can trust my broker. I can trust JFD here. Say so they have a 100% STP DMA execution model. And uh, now you might say, well, this is something. Didn't these guys from FXCM say the same? Well, they did, but they never proved it. This is completely different at JFD. JFD has post trade transparency report. So you can you can contact JFD if you if you think this was weird with the order execution. You can contact the service at JFD and say, hey, uh, could I please get such a post trade transparent uh, transparency report to to check who filled my order, how fast it was filled, everything, um, where it was filled, which time, and everything. They they give this information to you, and you can see who was the 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 opponent of your trade. Like, well, I don't know, Deutsche Bank or um, let's say Credit Suisse or UBS. So they 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 tell you who was the the other part. In case of of um, um, other brokers who are not offering this, well, there's probably a reason why they don't offer it, since they probably take the other side of your trades. Now, just imagine you're a money manager, as I am. And uh, well, you're you're getting paid from your clients for trade their money for being profitable. So what you want to avoid here is this um, uh, back and forth when there was there was a there was slippage in an order or something. So it happened already. It, it happened already that I had um, sometimes um, 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 questions regarding the the execution since the client had a question here. So what did I do? I just contacted the service desk at JFD Brokers, said, could you please give me a post-trade transparency report here on this um, order number? Well, and there we go. Um, I presented it to the client. The client was happy since he saw everything was fine. It was just the market conditions resulting in slippage then. And I could do what I'm getting paid for, trade the markets. Um, so in this case, um, um, you, you already are at a disadvantage the moment um, if you're trading with a broker who has such a market making license and the broker um, who is uh, allowed to trade against you and profit from your losses. So you usually should look for a trader, uh, I'm sorry, for a broker who is not doing that. 
well, then it's the inner voice, right? So you're training against yourself. Um, and your inner voice tries to manipulate you. So just imagine you were in a position and um, then you, you just heard this inner voice saying, hey, take the gains here. Take it. Just take it. I mean, the market um, um, is already has already um, risen that much so it's no more, no more real potential here take take the, the gains or the hope comes into play you're in a losing position oh well take out the stop well ignore the stop here market will return probably you're seeing some some further points the market will drop but you get stopped out and you know as it always is market turns around take out the stop so this is the inner voice uh, which tries to manipulate you and um, which in the long term will cost you a lot of money, probably your trading account. So do you have a game plan? That's the question which all this is about. And do you know on which columns profitable trading is built on? No. Well, all I can say then is good luck since you have no real chance to, to, uh, to, yeah, to become profitable in your trading if you do not have a game plan. And here now um, we have the three columns. So it's uh, risk and money management. Well, quail surprise, right? Um, it's trading psychology, and it's a strategy with an advantage. And all these, uh, these three columns, this is what profitable trading is built on. Now you might say, well, I'm already an expert on risk and money management, so I, I already know some, uh, some, some burdens I have from a mental um, side here. So trading psychology is also something I can cope with. All I need is uh, a trading strategy. Um, which has an advantage, positive expected value, then I can just uh, start trading, right? So that's it. No, definitely not, since you have to understand that those three columns are connected with each other. So it's one column missing. You're definitely not capable of making money anymore. And this is what, what this presentation will be about. So it's not just telling you, okay, those three columns are, um, you have to master them and then it's, this, this is it. But you have to understand this um, here, that these columns seem to stand there independently, but they interact really strong with each other. So if a trader fails to succeed in one area or does master it in detail, the chances of being profitable in trading are close to zero. And um, now what I did was I, I um, have some examples here to show how these three columns interact with each other. And all we do here is we, we um, give a rough overview of um, how these columns interact. I give a little deeper overlook um, on risk and money management, trading psychology and everything, but all in all, it will be just a rough overview. So you're not prepared to master those, th those three columns if you're just listening to this, to this uh, presentation here, but you have, to really, um, you have to really understand and go into further details here to understand uh, what these three columns are about. So let's look at risk money management and trading psychology. Um, working respectively trading with an adequate position size has consequences on the mental stability of the trader, which makes perfect sense, since a position size which is far too big will lead to a behavior of fast profit trading and letting losing trades run. So um, just imagine the following. So well, today you get a call and someone tells you, um, you'll, um, you'll, you'll, uh, um, you're giving, um, you will be given that way around, um, you will be given, I don't know, quarter million, let's say. So, um, meaning that, um, uh, well, I don't know, an uncle just died and, and, uh, you, uh, yeah, you just, um, inherit 250,000 or something. So. Now imagine the following, you have a job which is uh, bringing you monthly salary of let's say 2,500 euros. I think this is, this is perfect. And now you read the trading book saying, well, just risk 1% of, of your trading capital per each trade. So now 250,000, you will use it to trade since you say, well, I, 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 need, I want to make some more money out of these 250,000. And then you're saying, okay, I'm just risking 1% of my of my my uh, trading equity here which equals in this case which equals to um, 2500 euros so yeah you know, now you decide to trade the five minute time frame you trade let's say as I present usually the the um, dex long or short in the morning I have a, um, a trading approach based on the open range with a discretionary approach here 
and um, based on that you say okay I risk on this trade let's say to make things easy here I'm risking 25 points which means um, I'm risking here um, 100 euro per point 25 multiplied by 100 is 2500 so you're risking 25 points or two and a half thousand one percent of your trading equity here with this trade now imagine you're trading a five minute time frame the market um, is, is running against you so it's not working out the trade as as you immediately um, um, uh, initially thought now um, you're trading a five minute time frame so you're losing something like I don't know 1.5 two probably so 20 points in like I, let, let's say 20 minutes and this is this is by far it's a quite long stretch um, so usually if you're on the run side of the trade based on my personal experience I can say that usually you're out of the uh, trade quite soon after you you just uh, set it up so you just lost 2,000 euros oh, so the market moves against you so you're not stopped out here but you look at the PL, you just lost 2,000 euros so usually you have to work four weeks to earn 2,500 euros and you just lost 2,000 in no time. 20, I mean it's 20 minutes, right? Um, now just imagine the following. What happens uh, to you mentally? What, what will you do? Will you just um, um, swallow the, the loss? Let's say you are, you're fine swallowing this loss. You say, okay, well I just lost 2,500. I'm usually working one month for that, but I bet this loss, this loss Will make something uh, with you. It, it will. It will uh, let you think. If you have the next setup, you have to trade. Since your strategy says so, you have to trade it. You won't take this um, setup anymore because you think, well, just imagine I'm losing again one percent, which is sim similar to two and a half thousand, so a little less than that. But it's again two and a half thousand. I'm usually working two months for that. Will you take the trade? Well, I definitely, I bet you won't. The same thing, by the way, with a winner. Just imagine the trade runs in your direction. You're making something like 1,500 euros in 10 minutes because there's a heavy breakout. The market starts to move in your direction. By the way, heavy breakout means the market moved 15 points in your direction. You remember, it's 100 points per, per point, uh, um, 100 euros per point. So 15 points, the market moves in, in your direction. Will you keep, uh, will you, will you, give the, the trade the chance to develop further to, 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 to participate in a trend which could develop here or do you say well usually I'm working more than half a month to earn 1,500 euros in a job I don't like okay with people I don't like well why not just taking the 1,500 euros here and just leave it as it is it's completely fine since, since from a mental perspective this is this is completely okay to think that way the problem is in trading this will cost you a lot of money and this is exactly where risk and money management and trading psychology is a perfect example where those two components um, work with each other or, or um, how they how they interact with each other so now trading psychology and trading and advantage trading strategy so changing the strategy over and over again, especially after searing a series of losing trades, possible reason the trader does not trust the strategy. Um, since he doesn't really know whether his approach is profitable in the long run or he does not know how long losing streaks on average take. What I'm talking about? Well, did you have ever the experience that you bought a trading book, you saw some, some patterns in, in it, let's say a head shoulder formation, and then you said, well, this makes perfect sense, let's trade it. Um, now you're looking for markets which show this um, this 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 um, um, setup, and then you just trade it. You just trade the head shoulder formation. Well, and then you see well the trade does not work out, and you're losing. Okay, let's say you're you're fine with losing. Um, you're fine with losing. So this is not the problem here. But the problem is that after two, three, four, five losing trades in a row, um, you start to think well doesn't make sense to trade this 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 pattern since it doesn't make money so I have to change it now you start let's say trading wedges or something so the thing is you do not really know how good this approach works or worked in the past so what you need to do is like working out a back test here seeing okay how many uh, times did I face a loss trade so finding out the hit rate on the other hand um, but also not just how many uh, how good is my hit rate here and how big is the loss rate no but you have to find out how long 
do, for example, losing streaks usually take? So let's say it's it's quite common that if you trade such a pattern here, um, I don't know, ten times you're losing seven out of it. It could be easily it could easily be that you're losing seven times a row, and you shouldn't change it since if your backtest showed that that you're fine by just having a hit rate of 30% since the payoff ratio, the, the um, ratio of average winners to average losers is um, like, I don't know, six, seven to one. So you're making on average seven times as much as you're usually losing. Well, the strategy is still profitable, highly profitable, and you should work with it and you should go with it since, well, you have a positive expected value. But the thing is, if you do not know this, you can't trust the strategy. Like, like, let's say you set up a business, you plan to set up a business, um, you, you buy, I don't know, um, um, a small, uh, yeah, a small outlet somewhere in a mall or something. And um, now you say, well, I, I do this together with someone, I, somehow I know him, but somehow I don't know him. So it's not your best friend, but it's a business partner. And then you, you, you formulate everything, you, you have a great business plan, you can, you, you, you say, well, all we need to do is, Take, put some money in it, and then see how every month month will come out of this 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 business here. Um, but now imagine you do not trust the other person. Do you think you can you can make money out of this 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 great business idea? I don't think so. In trading, it's exactly the same. So even if you if you have a great idea, and if you have an advantage strategy, and if you have the money to um, 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 and a good risk and money management plan, and try you, you can easily try to capitalize on it. Well, if the psychology does not play with, with um, 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 or if, if you're if you're mentally not stable enough, if you do not trust what you're doing, you won't make any money out of it in the long run. Short term, short term probably may work, and if you continue it over and over again, there's another thing. So now we're going into too much detail here. So I, I won't um, um, uh, um, um, uh, bring this, this this discussion that far. But usually you're you're already in the state of the so-called unconscious competence. The moment when you just do something because you know it works, um, like well, driving a car or something. So at the at the beginning you had really to understand. Okay, now. Um, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, and you, you thought about it and you had to concentrate, but um, after some time you just repeated it and it worked out. But this is something you have to build, so this is where trust comes into play. You, you can trust that it works out, but if, if at the beginning there is some, yeah, some, 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 uh, some failure somewhere, it might be ridiculously small, but this can completely result in not trusting your strategy anymore and not being capable capable of, of capitalizing on it. So you can see that that uh, trading psychology plays a very important role here. Trust in the trading strategy plays a very important role, but also risk and money management and trading and advantage trading strategy. Also here, the question is, for example, how big is the advantage of your trading strategy? And based on this information, so what is the optimal position size to keep drawdown small while still getting to see an optimal growth of your equity curve? Um, now here, by the way, trading psychology comes to, to, to play. Let's say you have a very advantage trading strategy. As already mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, you have a great trading strategy with a huge advantage. And now let's say, based on all you know about risk and money management, the optimal position size says, well, risk, let's say, 3% per, 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 per position. 3%. Three per, per, three so usually you're reading risk between 0.5 to to 1% in your trading. By the way, if you ask me, um, what's the optimal position size? I say it depends. It depends since it depends on how advantaged your trading strategy is. The more, the, the higher the edge you have, the higher your 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 betting size should be. This is like like in a casino. I mean, um, like like playing blackjack, let's say, okay. And you know the deck is hot, and you have a payoff of three to one. Uh, I'm sorry, three to two, one and a half to one, um, for every time you hit a blackjack. Well, you have to bet high. You have to bet higher. This is just is just what you what you're doing when playing blackjack. The same thing with trading, and um, so here in this moment, let's say you, this 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 uh, risk and money management plan says, well, risk three percent. Just imagine if you say, well, this is too much. 
I yeah now let's come back to the point where you just um, um, inherit uh, two hundred fifty thousand from your uncle somewhere. Two hundred three percent of of two hundred fifty thousand. You're risking seven thousand five hundred euros per trade. Can you can you handle this? I mean, well, what what I can definitely say based on my personal experience is. Do not think in um, absolute money here. In, in, do not think in money on what you can what you can buy with the money. But what you have to do is you have to to understand that trading is a game based on expected value, and you have to condition yourself um, to really understand that it, at the end you can win, you can lose. What you need to avoid is. If you lose, to lose as much that you're going broke with it. But on the other hand, making sure that um, that you that you get optimally paid for taking the risk you take. And uh, now you can see that those three columns they they work with each other, they interact with each other. And you, you have you have to understand this if you want to be profitable in your in your trading. So now um, this is a lot of of, of text here. And um, nevertheless, I, I, I run through it a little since we have some, I, I, I want to make sure that you have something out of each column here. Um, so first of all, first of all, very important, understand that trading is not about predicting the direction of the market, but it's about making rational and intelligent bets. So this is the first column, risk of money management. And you don't need to know whether the market goes up or if the market goes down. Sure, you have to, to make sure that you're trading with an advantage. But if you see a sequence of higher highs and higher lows, well, you know there's an uptrend and you should go long. Okay? The question is where to go long, but this is a technical question. First of all, you have to make sure you have an advantage. And if you have an advantage, then you have to make sure that you have an approach which is using this advantage to optimally capitalize on, uh, on this advantage. And um, in this context here, answering the question what profitable trading means comes into play. So trading is uh, or it means that you're trading an easy, duplicable, and advantageous trading strategy with a positive expected value. By the way, if you take anything out of this webinar, then write down this formula. Expected value is uh, equals to the hit rate multiplied with the average winning trade. You subtract the loss rate multiplied with the average losing trade. And if this, if this term here is bigger zero, uh, or those two terms, the difference here is bigger zero, then you have a positive expected value, and then you're making money with your trading. Now, the thing is, if you know that this is the case, you have to make sure that you're staying alive with your account long enough to capitalize, to be capable on, on capitalizing on this positive expected value. So now, understanding that with a decreasing payoff ratio, for example, so you remember payoff ratio was the average winner to the average loser, that this increases the chances, uh, or no, decreases, I'm sorry, decreases the chances of hitting the risk of ruin. Um, and um, if the payoff ratio decreases, well, you're increasing exponentially the risk of ruin. Um, of your trading, so you 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 re your risk of going broke increases dramatically the moment um, you have a payoff ratio which goes into the direction of 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 uh, one and below one. Okay, I'm not talking about zero, but but this is usually a good indication. So if you watch your trading journal right now, if you look into it, and you see that your average loser is by far smaller than your average winner. Uh, I'm sorry, than your average loser then usually you have a first sign that you're not capable of letting winners run and cutting losers short. And you need an enormous high hit rate to make sure that at the end you're at least breaking even. Probably you're already losing money. And this is the first thing you have to understand. By the way, those two components here, average winning trade and average losing trade, are the payoff ratio. Obviously, it's already included in this formula of the expected value. And then you have to understand that the target of the trader is to find a trading approach which has a risk of ruin of zero. Okay, so um, this is, by the way, a very great uh, um, uh, rule of thumb here. So um, I'm working in this business for quite a while now, and I was I was um, um, already uh, or I worked already for a broker, a very big <coughs> broker. I already mentioned the broker here that was um, FXM. I built daily FX for them in, in the German, um, Austria, and uh, German, Austrian, and, and uh, Swiss uh, um, community here. 
And um, so I know what I'm talking about. So I know the stats in the background. And what we can say is, um, beside a payoff ratio of less than zero, if you're using a aggressive, a too aggressive leverage, then um, the the broker rule comes into play 90-90-90, meaning that 90% of all traders lose 90% of their trading equity in 90 days. And now some might say it's not true. That can't be true. That nine out of 10 traders lose their money in one quarter, um, or at least 90% of it. Well, it is true. Believe me, it is it is true. And now you can also understand why trading against clients, for example, is highly profitable for brokers and why they can afford to have um, 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 offices somewhere at Wall Street and paying rents like, I don't know, 50000 a month for, for huge offices. Well, just imagine the following. You have plenty of traders. You're trading against those clients and you're on the other side of their trades. And now let's imagine that the average deposit size um, um, of, of, of money the trader puts into the account is something like 10,000. And now imagine that 90% of that in 90 days goes to the broker, which is standing on the other side of the trade. So he's making 9,000 9, euros out of it, 9,000. Okay, and this is also something which is really special about uh, JFD brokers. So not trying to profit from this, but saying, well, we are trader focused, trader centric. This is, this is our business and we are 100% transparent and um, uh, straightforward and not playing any games with our traders, but we believe that creating a win-win situation for the traders, but also for us as a broker, we want you to be successful, to stay in business, to generate commissions, to grow your equity, to make sure that you're generating more commissions since you can afford to, to trade bigger, that this makes business for us, makes money for us, and that way both sides profit. So this is special about JFD brokers in this case, something which is worth um, uh, worth to mention, since in this business, this what, what the, 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 the business model JFD Brokers has is unique. It's no joke, it's a unique business model, and the rule here, 90-90-90, shows why it's unique, since usually um, greed comes sooner rather than later into play, and they say, well, I can highly I can, I can be so profitable trading against my clients, it can make me so much money. Um, and this shows why, what it's worth to mention here, why JFD Brokers is, is offering such a great product here and why you should definitely consider JFD Brokers to be your broker. Okay, so now two charts to give you a better overview of what I'm talking about. So with a decreasing payoff ratio, the chances of reaching the risk of reading increases exponentially. So this chart um, is a perfect example for that. So you see here is the payoff ratio. And here's the risk of reen. So the higher the payoff ratio, the lower the risk of reen. That's it. Okay. So yeah. Nevertheless, I have to add here: there are trading approaches who have a payoff ratio below one, but are still profitable because the, here already you can see that the hit rate plays a certain role. So traders who have a great understanding of the market can easily work with payoff ratios which are be, um, below one, since. Even if they, let's say, have a payoff ratio of 0 0.9 to, to 1, making, uh, meaning on average they make 90 cents for every dollar or every euro they, uh, they are losing, um, if you have a hit rate of 70%, you can easily um, 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 calculate that, the, that this is still a positive expected value, meaning 0 0.9 um, multiplied with 0 0.7, you get 0 0.63 and you um, um, take 0 0.3 away from that, so 30% loss rate multiplied with 1, and you still have 30, 33 cents per trade you make on average for every dollar you, uh, um, or every euro you risk. Okay, so it's still a positive expected value. Now, it's, imagine you have a high uh, trading frequency, and you usually I don't know, trade a 100,000 euro account. So you're risking 1% of this since you know your expected value, which is positive. So you're making on average for each trade, not, it, it doesn't matter if you're a winner or a loser. No, on average you're making 330 euros um, per trade you're, you're trading since you're risking 1,000 euro per trade. And now imagine you're making, I don't know, 500 trades a year. Making 500 trades multiplied with 330 euros you're making on average per trade means you're making 165,000. This is 165% performance. It's, it's huge. I'm not saying that this is easy, but it's something you have to, to remember here. If you start to think in um, expectancy, um, you, you get a grasp of what's the difference between a profitable and a 
pro trader and someone who is just an amateur. Um, this is the over, uh, this is this is um, what 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 uh, yeah where 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 there's the difference between the pro and the amateur. Okay, so the uh, the pro exactly knows what he's doing and he doesn't cares about uh, he does not care about um, 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 if he's winning or losing since he knows his expected value based on all the trades in the in the past. It's not sad that he can easily duplicate this, but if he knows what he's doing. Well, the chances increase significantly that he knows what he's doing. So I'm not saying that having a payoff ratio below um, one is is um, is is uh, resulting in, in in not being profitable in your trading, um, but you need to have a deep and very good understanding of the market. And so what I usually teach my students is, guys, work on your payoff ratio. Work on letting winners run and cutting losers short. This increases your chances of being profitable and being being um, long lived in your trading significantly. While if you start out, have no clue what's going on in the markets, just look at the chart and see some some uh, some colors without really knowing what those colors show you. Well, you do not have an edge, okay. And if you then on top of that do not have a payoff ratio which is significantly bigger than one, um, and you do not allow yourself to make a mistake. You definitely get trouble with your with your trading. Second charts here that this is with the hit rate. So I, I um, somehow already um, um, explained to you why the hit rate is is important here. So um, you see it's a German it's a German table, but this is uh, Trefferquote means hit rate, and this is the payoff ratio. So average winner uh, um, divided by the average loser. And there you can see. Let's say you have a payoff ratio of of two to one, which is already good. Okay, somewhere here. Nevertheless, with a hit rate of just 10%, you will lose money since the expected value is negative. Okay. On the other hand, um, just imagine you have a hit rate of let's say 70%, as mentioned uh, some some seconds ago, and you have a payoff ratio of one to one, and slightly below that, you still you, you have really no chance of going broke with this approach. It's not possible. Okay. Nevertheless, you have to make sure that you have a hit rate of 70% all the time. Since if you drop to 50% someday and you just have a payoff ratio of 1 to 1, well, you're broke by 100%, definitely. Okay, And this is something you have to really understand when it comes to risk and money management. Now the next thing, what is a solid mental fundament build on? Um, so first of all, understanding that the target is to reach the mental state of unconscious competence. We already talked about this and trading a profitable approach out of one's zone. This is called the zone. Um, I, I highly recommend the book from Mike Douglas, Mike D. Douglas I think it was, um, on trading psychology and at Amazon. It's, it's a perfect book for getting the concept here behind this. And the, the logical question is, okay, how do I get to the state of unconscious competence? Well, the answer is practice, practice, practice. That's it. Um, repeating it over and over again. We already talked about this a, f um, a few minutes ago. So then understanding that emotions in trading are not necessarily something bad but natural and that the target is to master those emotions. Um, and now the thing is, how many times did you hear that if you get emotional in your trading, well, you're done. You will definitely lose. I bet that was several times that you heard exactly that. But this is the thing. You have to be emotional. So you have to find a driver which drives you, which brings you to the point where you are in your zone. Like, I don't know, fear of, of not being capable of, of paying my rent anymore. For me, this would be a state where I say, well, this is definitely something I want to avoid. Not, not being capable of paying my rent, yes, but, but also trading out of this motivation here. Um, for me, it would result in being completely unprofitable in my trading. But for someone else, it might work since they say, well, this is exactly the drive I need. I need this pressure. Some might um, understand this, some don't, but at the end you really have to find um, which motivations, which emotions drive, are driving you crazy and result in being unprofitable in your trading um, and which ones are those who support my target of being more profitable. Okay, so trading is something highly individual. So you, you can say, well, this works out since it worked out at, with this guy, since this guy is definitely completely different from you. And this is something you have to understand. And that's, by the way, one of the reasons why in my trading um, coachings, I teach the guys the, um, 
concepts behind it, but I don't say, well, you have to do it that way since this is the way it will work, since every guy is individual. It's an individual and that why, uh, that's why they, they, they have to work out a strategy for themselves and how to um, um, work with all these concepts here. And then you have to understand that you need to know and understand yourself really well. And if you want to become uh, profitable, that's crucial. And um, this, for example, is something um, worth also to note here, probably also a starting point here in terms of the trading psychology. You create a, tra um, um, a psychological profile um, and uh, you, you write down what, what kind of person am I. And then on top of that, you formulate a trading strategy, which is not just a trading strategy, um, which is uh, saying, well, this has a positive expected value, but it has to correspond with your trading character, with your with your um, with with your with your um, lifestyle, yeah, it, it's it's somehow you you have to to understand that someone who is working, um, I don't know, forty hours or something a, a week, so eight hours a day, um, and have to work from nine to five. Well, obviously you can't trade in the morning, the market open in the DAX. It's, it's just not possible. You can trade it, but you have to focus on it and you have to find a way how to optimally profit from this um, um, market opening um, um, here and not just say, well, uh, tomorrow I'm on holidays and then I start to, to, to trade the DAX market opening and then after two weeks of, of holidays, well, I go back to work. Um, since you have to repeat this over and over again, since it's the long term which makes you profitable and not just five or ten trades. Um, and on top of that, it helps to tranquilize your inner voice, which tries to sabotage you. Um, and uh, this is uh, something you have to also understand. Um, if you have a, a losing streak here, that you don't say, okay, well, I lost five times in a row. I'll, I just quit the strategy and look for another one, since you know it's completely normal that you're, that you're facing such a losing streak here. So now, here the thing. This is the perfect chart, by the way, why emotions are essential in your trading. And um, and then uh, here the jerks Dotson the, the oh, sorry the jerks Dotson model or the jerks Dotson curve comes into play, and um, it is uh, yeah it's 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 perfectly showing where where um, um, and the zone can be found. So in German it's the so-called um, optimales Erregungsniveau. This is like um, the zone in English, and uh, you have here, you have your 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 so-called performance, and obviously you're you're yeah optimally performing here in this region, while here you have the so-called arousal level. So, and this is something this is easily understand. You can easily understand this, like um, looking uh, soccer players uh, prepare for a very important game. You won't see them um, uh, um, come into the stadium and then just start playing but they start to to um, to push themselves to warm up they have to and uh, this is by the way something um, which can be easily adapted to this here so you have to see that you're that you're um, uh, that you have to increase your attention and your interest and um, to reach this optimal level of arousal here to optimally perform but if you overpace during the warm-up here and you can easily um, adapt this to the gym for example you might have been in the gym and then you said okay let's find a good uh, level of arousal here and then you push like crazy and you were completely exhausted after 10 minutes and then said okay now that was the workout now let's uh, that, that was that was the warm-up now let's start with the workout so your your performance will be horrible since you're not here but you're somewhere here and this is where um, where we start to to lose control, where you start to drop in the so-called unconscious in the region of unconscious competence, and if you are not prepared for for trade in this region here, and if you just um, uh, work on on all those things which you worked out in the past, but you probably didn't um, know that that or. You do, you do not believe that um, setting a stop, for example, is so important for you in trading. Well, what will happen if you're in this region then here, you will definitely not set a stop to your trade. You won't do this. Why? Well, well very easy because you're um, performing in the unconscious competence in this region. You're not knowing what you're doing anymore, which means if you do not know that you need to set, um, to, 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 to set a stop, well, you won't do it. 
Um, and this is something which you have to get if you're if you're looking at, at trading psychology here. Um, this is where you want to be, the level of optimal arousal. This is this is uh, the target. And then the final thing is the advantage trading strategy. So what does it mean? Obviously, uh, having an advantage trading strategy, which in fact means having a strategy with a positive expected value, um, after a long test, back test, a long time frame, you test the strategy in and especially under different market um, 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 conditions. So the strategy already proved that it worked well under different market conditions, uh, meaning that you as a trader do not reach the point of ruin and meaning that it's robust, okay? And um, on top of that, as already mentioned, the strategy has to fit the personality, respectively the character of the trader, which also means it has to fit the life circumstances, meaning already said someone working full-time 50 hours a week will very unlikely be able to trade an approach profitably which generates 50 trades a day hardcore scalping won't work I can definitely I, I, I bet it won't work even if you're saying I'm going on holidays now well after holidays you have to go back to work and just imagine you just you lost money during those two weeks which is completely fine it doesn't mean that the strategy doesn't work but um, a positive expected value meaning that you're capitalizing on this strategy over and over and over and over again over weeks over months over years and uh, you're trading it under different market conditions and at the end you're still making money and you're not necessarily making money in those two weeks and um, so here you have to understand that having a profitable trading strategy also means that a trader is confident and firmly believes in the strategy based on a solid backtest, um, which you ran and where you could see that the strategy works in the long run. Okay, And I'm not talking about over-optimizing here and curve-fitting stuff, but I'm talking about working out a trading strategy which has, let's say, just two parameters you can influence. Let's say it's a moving average strategy. You have one moving average, a second moving average, and you can't, multi, um, uh, you can't, you can't really manipulate it. You can easily say, okay, I'm using the five um, um, simple moving average and I'm using the ten simple moving average. And um, if this doesn't work, I take the three and the nine moving average or something sure this is something you can do but you will easily find out that um, or you I, I hope you get the concept so what I'm talking about is you do not have kinds of in tons of indicators um, where you can put I don't know 10 um, um, different different parameters parameters into but where you say well I'm working with two components here so I just can say I'm taking this moving average and this moving average not saying that moving average strategies always work but you can easily find those for you and based on that you know well they're working in trend markets so the only thing you have to find is a trending market and then working with the strategy and um, you probably will be fine it sounds ridiculous but I mean, this is better than over-optimizing and, and um, your strategy curve-fitting, doing curve-fitting and everything. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's nearly based on, on what, what we are talking about here in terms of the advantage trading strategy. So I found a very great um, um, quote here from Bruce Lee um, who said, I don't fear the man who practices 1,000 kicks one time each, but I fear the man who practices one kick 1,000 times. Okay, so he's a, he's, he really knows what he's doing. And this is exactly what you, what you need to find. Find a strategy which is suiting your personal character, which is suiting your life circumstances, and um, where you know it's robust, and then practice it over and over and over again, making it um, something which comes to the state of the unconscious competence and uh, which can just be achieved if the trader, as already, as already said, keeps on trading it over and over and over and over again. Um, yeah, so here are an overview, final overview of those three columns. So if you're looking for profitability in your trading and uh, or and or you're looking for an educational course, a seminar, which is bringing you, um, um, uh, which is bringing you exactly there. Um, well, I always recommend people look for someone who is capable of bringing you um, details about each column: trading psychology, risk and money management, and an advantage trading strategy, which which makes you understanding what this is about. And on top of that, 
which perfectly shows you, not just in theory, but also uh, um, under, under uh, real market conditions, how these components interact with each other. So risk and money management, what are the main questions which should be answered are, for example, what does trading uh, profitability in trading mean? What is the payoff ratio? What's the risk of reen? What um, is the so-called scale out when, once a position doesn't work the way it should? How can you optimize your payoff ratio? How to premise on a, on a winning trade? All these things. Um, in the trading psychology, well, you have to understand, you have to get a, the idea, the concept of the four steps of learning good and bad emotions, this, um, uh, differentiate between those two, how to profit from those two. Um, so not just from the bad emotions, but also from the good emotions or the other way around, how to reach the zone, how to create um, a personal trading psychology profile, um, and so on, and building an advantage trading strategy. So formulating a trading idea, building a professional risk and money management approach, uh, preparing for mental um, 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 tripping hazards and so on. So if you if you really want to to succeed in trading, you have to master all those. You have to find someone who can understand, who, who can bring you a, a deeper, who can give you a deeper understanding of all those um, um, three columns, and um, then let's say you might have a chance. Uh, it's not sad that you're that you're profitable from there. So I've seen people mastering all these three, but um, at the end, somehow, somewhere, um, I'm failing uh, since they, they, uh, they grasp uh, or they, 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 they lost the motivation, for example, or something else did, some, something, something else happened. Um, but in, it, let's say it increases the chances of being profitable in your trading enormously, I'd say. And um, yeah, so that's it from my end. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I hope you enjoyed the morning, uh, the morning meeting. No, I'm sorry. Uh, the uh, this this uh, special webinar. So the morning meeting will take place next time uh, on Tuesday at 9:30 a.m. GMT at the YouTube channel in the YouTube channel from JFD Brokers. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, just um, um, write me a mail or um, um, yeah, ask them in the chat box. Uh, all I have to say is uh, happy Easter. <laughs> happy Easter. Watch your stops. Happy trading and uh, talk to you then again uh, next week on Tuesday. Um, next Thursday, the next special webinar will take place. By the way, I have to look which topic will we cover next week. It will be oh, a great topic. Um, we will have a deeper look into the trading psychology aspect this, this time then. It's uh, on how to use behavioral finance to improve your trading. So uh, behavioral finance, behavioral economics is a great topic. Um, some of my, uh, my co absolute favorites. Um, so yeah, just tune in. That's all I say. And uh, yeah, happy Easter. Talk to you again with, uh, with the morning meeting next week. Um, and uh, yeah, have a nice evening. See you and bye-bye.